and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a couple returning good brothers into the temple. The two ma the two man project that is homie and the dude. In one in one hand we've got in one corner we've got Tom and the other we've got Buddy. Coming to previous coming to us with um Sky Zephyrs. Jeez, why can I talk? Why can't I talk? I suppose English is my first language. <laughs> and now coming to us with the Wandering Tavern. How are you guys doing today, man? Dude. Yeah, doing all right, man. Doing uh, doing good. We are uh, we're 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 coming down off the the high that was the Kickstarter. Um, you know, we're into the nitty gritty stuff of of the Wandering Tavern Kickstarter. Um, mm -hmm. first of all, though, dude, it's an absolute pleasure to be back. Thank you for having us on. We yeah, really, really returning guests, it. man. We feel honored. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's that that you know some some we of must not have pissed you special. off. You must must not have uh, insulted your audience that much so that we were yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly P people were like you know you, you can have that back. yeah exactly well Thanks, even, even if it. even if somebody told me no i would have done it anyways <laughs> <laughs> love it love it like my my, appro my approach to it has always been i'm making mac and cheese and none of you fuckers are stopping me <laughs> <laughs> hey gotta love that mac and cheese man gotta love that <laughs> mac and cheese Oh. Yeah, no, it's been a, it was, it's, the whole month was like a full sprint for us, so um, coming to the end of the Kickstarter, it was literally all hands on deck till the, the last, really the last hours, and then um, we just been, you know, kind of a combination between decompressing from that, that really, really hard run at it. And then also celebrating, and now also you know kind of pivoting. So half of our team is moving to the next Kickstarter, and uh, the other half is really getting their head around fulfilling this one. So yeah, lots of stuff going on right now. We're it's almost like a. Would you feel like it's a little kind of a mental hangover? A yeah, bit? it's definitely it's and yeah, an emotional. Yeah, yeah both. Yeah, both. Yeah. Definitely very much. I mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. Well, well kind of have a prairie it. oyster. <laughs> Dude, what what is I, I've heard of those before. What is that again? Is that a is that a shot? What is that, or is that an actual thing? Uh, it's e egg, salt, and some other stuff. It's a bit. It's a it's a running gag because of the drink making its appearance in Cowboy Bebop as a remedy for hangovers. Uh yeah yeah yeah. yeah why didn't I know that? that? I don't know why I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks absolutely disgusting, but it supposedly works. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It sounds not great from your description of the ingredients. I'm not going to lie. They sound, like, <laughs> sound like bad ingredients. <laughs> well, yeah. when you're when you're dealing with something to quickly get rid of a hangover, you're not going to. You shouldn't expect it to taste decent. <laughs> That's true. That is true. You need to burn that shit out of your system. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. So when it comes so when it comes to hangovers, that's that's always something that comes to, that comes to mind. And of course, yeah. given Probably. given some of my um, concoctions, I'm not one to talk of, or regarding something tasting terrible, because <laughs> some people fair. still some people still don't forgive me for the um, whole, for the whole drink a bottle of bacon soda thing. Oh wait wait wait. Stop right there. What's bacon, bacon soda? Bacon soda, or like Wait, baking, baking soda. like the, the powder B -A -C -O -N. stuff. Oh, what even is that, dude? I don't know what bacon soda is. It's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> no, but like, do you make it? Yeah, that's no. a good question. Do you no, make it, I, or do you? No, I get it. I get it from this. Spe I get it from the specialty shop down down in Minneapolis. Oh my god, that's wild! And it's so it's 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 basically like fizzy soda, but bacon flavored. Bacon flavored. Yes, that's things are bacon flavored these wild. days. You can get bacon in waffles. You can get bacon in. Uh, you can get bacon flavored ice cream. I'm guessing. Dude, yes. that's so wild. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah, bacon it's soda. absolutely disgusting, and that's part of the reason I I utilize it. It's it's there is a punishment if somebody does something ridiculously stupid at the table. The idea, nice. the idea is make the punishment so much worse than the crime that they wouldn't try it. Nice. So I this like is it. this is for your home game. Yeah. Um, okay. 
if if I'm not doing that, it's the pain glass, which is a shot glass filled with water, salt, sea salt, pepper, and about four different hot um hot sauces, including at least one f that you would see on hot ones. Incredible! Uh, yeah, dude, dude that's that, awesome. Wait, dude, 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 that's incredible. You got bacon soda at the table and the pain glass. The pain the glass. Table. Dude. Do you, dude? Do you have a? Do you have like a a paddle as well, and also no. like a ball no. gag? <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, dude, just, dude, just clarifying dude, that's, dude, with this table. <laughs> dude, that's incredible. I think uh, I think that's a really fun way to to bring your players it to, to to make the consequences. So, is that for like a low roll or like a bad decision <laughs> in game? Like, when are they getting the pain? Like, a, like a really, really pants on head, stupid bad decision, or if they get caught cheating. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. interesting. Got a bunch of cheaters so, at the table. So, let me, I was going to say, does that mean, does that encourage trying to not get caught cheating? <laughs> it is, it, it is, the, it is a, the whole, th it is a successor to a rule that I had when, when we would all play Goldeneye at my, at my place, that, that, um, mm. if anyone picked odd job, we were allowed to hit you below the belt after the match. <laughs> and if you've seen old, if you've seen footage of Odd Job in like N sixty four Goldeneye, you then you'll know why. <laughs> Dude, um, that is incredible. Dude, that is Dude, incredible. Your, your games are like physical activities as well. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. Like, uh, well, it's a, it's a mental and spiritual and physical <laughs> experience. A, a lot of a lot of the people who are at my physical games are people who. I became friends with when I had my brief foray doing stunt work, so we're all very familiar <laughs> with how to get with how to get without to get our asses kicked. Um, yeah, amazing, lovely. Well, dude, I, I know. I sorry, sorry for uh, hijacking that with the bacon soda, but yeah. I, can I just do it one more time because I want to know about your stunt work, dude? Yeah, I was I was about <laughs> to ask the same thing. Yeah. Stunt work? What? Tell yeah. us about this that. This was this was very very brief, but. I I was I was working on I was working on an independent film, um, mm -hmm. back back in back in the Saint Paul area. I mean it it wasn't actually Saint Paul, but the townships ar around the place are still part of the Twin Cities, quote unquote. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which me which means you have to deal with the uncomfortable question of which is the better of the two. Which look back in the day that could start a fight. <laughs> Yeah, uh, no, there's, there's definitely like uh, allegiances, aren't there, or just passions? It's the, it's the degraded to passions, but um, it got it used to be a lot more nasty. Um, yeah, that's part that's part of the reason the Lakers got ran out of of uh, Minneapolis. Well, yeah, there yeah. were other reasons, but that's the one I'm focusing on for this. But because um, <laughs> cause this this was a real shoestring kind of production, so I was wearing a bunch of different hats. Like I was doing stuff as an extra, I was doing oh. a few um, voice works, and I was do I was doing some stunt. I was doing a brief bit of stunt work. Um, the stunt work part was an extended weekend, and I had to deal with a crash course in how in how to take a hit. And yeah. then I f then I find out that we're doing a bar fight scene. And, <laughs> um... <laughs> That's fucking terrible. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah, you're like, oh, I've, I've done my stunt work now, but now there's a bar scene. Oh, God, I've, I've just understood how to take a punch. Good. Now I'm gonna take fifty in a bar fight <laughs> scene coming from so different angles. I got hit. I got hit with. I got hit with bar stools. I got hit. I got hit with glass <laughs> bottles. I got tossed around. Um, and yeah, yeah. The I was I was wearing I was wearing padding, so I so I wasn't getting cut or se or seriously hurt, mm -hmm. but. It's like it's like that whole less lethal thing, you know. Just because it hurts less yeah. doesn't mean it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. Or or Dude, how you... um people have people have had broken ribs getting shot while wearing um Kevlar. Yeah, 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 totally. Oh yeah, does this does this uh, short film exist to be uh, consumed anywhere? Um, I'd like to. See it, it got dude. it got edited all to, it got edited all to hell, and I had a bit of a falling out with the director, so I haven't really. <laughs> Fo I haven't really focused on that. I've I've instead focused on the fact that I got paid six hundred dollars to get the holy hell beat out of me over a few, <laughs> over a few weeks. I know I can say that by the time I was, um, d by the time I was done, 
um, I ended up calling. I ended up calling the boss of my real job, and they said, "I'm not coming in. I can. I can't even get out of bed." Were the chairs like stunt chair? Was the, was the glass stunt glass or some real glass? Dude? Um, <laughs> the glass was sugar glass, which does break. Okay, that's good. good. That's good. Um, depending on thickness, sugar glass can break stupid easy. This one was a bit thicker because, well, it had to look like um, it had to look like bottle bottles you'd find at a bar the mm -hmm. but the um the wooden bar stools were barely gimmicked so that they'd break easy so i got hit hard yeah, way yeah. a bunch of times savage Damn, that dude. sucks it's just just you show up to work and they're like we're gonna pay you six hundred dollars and then i'm gonna beat you with a stool today <laughs> yeah you're like oh man biggest stunt stunt people don't there, I don't think there's a category in the Oscars for stunt people currently. And, uh, I don't think there's a category. Should there there should be, though. Right? I um, yeah. I ended up doing... And keep in mind, you're not doing just one take. It's <laughs> 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 a 20-minute oh, bar fight scene. <laughs> Each shot is like at least <laughs> fucking three to ten takes. <laughs> you just can't. Absolutely. In the same terrible. spot, just right in the back of the neck with a bar stool like ten times. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy oh, man, yeah that's oh. funny dude. Like, i'm not dude like first of all i can feel your pain but like it, it is like you have to appreciate it is a little bit funny to from, from just like you know what i mean the, the, I the, it's, it's 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 wild to me as well what what was the padding made out of was it like foam or was it like you know impact absorbent like like d3o kind of thing like it was what, foam. what was the what were the pads made out of? it was foam. Oh, okay. like i said they were cheap okay <laughs> but <laughs> Now, with the Wandering Tavern, you've described it as a Studio Ghibli-inspired setting. Now, yes, yes. If, some, if someone looks through Ghibli's catalog, they'd see they'd see that that's tackling a wide variety of subject matters and and genres. I mean, well, yeah. well, it did, but I'm not going to get into that. So, mm. what? W so, I think I think it's important to have a little bit of specificity regarding what aspects of what um aspects of Ghibli or what films in it in his um filmography were inspirations I can de okay. I can definitely say that Castle of Cagliostro wasn't one of them <laughs> yeah 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 um so so here, here's here, here's the route that it kind of went down so we we created the Wandering Tavern as part of Sky Zephyrs it was one of the one of the like pre-made Zephyrs that people got as part of that book Mm -hmm. We then asked people, we, we then unlocked a stretch goal that was um, making an STL for one ship. And everyone chose the Wandering Tavern. There was like unanimous love. It was, it was ridiculous how much of a landslide it was. Mm -hmm. So we, I, I created the idea originally because I, I love Howl's Moving Castle. And um, it, I wanted to have something like that in my world. Um, and I wanted to have, you know, the ability to, you know, I already had airships. I wanted to, you know, consider what a, you know, maybe Death Star sized or, you know, lo very large, you know, exceedingly big, you know, maybe airship carrier sized airship would be in, in my world and what it would look like and how, how it would kind of work. So mm -hmm. I kind of went off from there. But then once we started diving deeper into the actual setting itself, um, there's loads of things that are very Studio Ghibli-esque in terms of just um, you look at the actual structure of the uh, of, of the Wandering Tavern itself. It's got Howl's Moving Castle vibes, but you also then kind of get that that slanted roof kind of pipe sticking out of places, very spirited away bathhouse mm -hmm. kind of inspiration as well. And you, you, you kind of get a lot of that from the art. Um, then within the actual uh, setting itself, you have like the games hall, which is all about like whimsy. You know, there's an arrow game there. There's gambling. Um, there's, you know, like a lot of wildness. There's music playing there. And it's meant to feel a little bit more like the chaotic part of what you're going to experience here. Um, you know, you have this kind of uh, two things playing, which is the the surface level stuff, which is like, oh, man, this would be a cool place to stay if you're an adventuring party, you know, because it's got lots of fun characters that, you know, are very diverse in look and theme and, and what they're doing, which is very Studio Ghibli-esque um, mm -hmm. uh, across the board. Um, and then you have this dark side to this whole thing, which is there is a massive criminal underbelly going on 
mm-hmm. in this floating tavern, which, you know, is very Studio ghibli A lot of his movies have those kind of dark turns, you know, those, those moments where things, you know, get a little bit more grungy for a little bit of time. Mm-hmm. And we really wanted to include some of that. So we actually have uh, a mafia that owns or is currently in control of the Wandering Tavern. And it's they've got you know there's a, a secret vault at the center of it that that holds um, a, the spiritual core of the entire uh, of the entire Wandering Tavern. The spiritual core is what all of the spirits that live on the Wandering Tavern, which again Studio Ghibli, the, the, almost all Studio Ghibli movies have spirits kind of involved with them. Mm-hmm. There are spirits that live all over the Wandering Tavern, and their core is in this kind of secret vault, and so um. There's just lots of layers to it, dude, and and it's beautiful. It's whimsical. There's lots to do. You know, there's there's a blacksmith that you can go to that's meant to be super fun and interesting. There's, you know, we've got loads of different bars where you can get different types of food and interact with various different types of characters where you can gain information and things like that. Um, you know, you then have activities like the bungee jump that we have you know all the games in the games holes Mm -hmm. um as well as then you know if you you can pretty much fight anywhere on this entire airship as well because we've built 15 layers of battle maps for for people to uh to use to to map their way through it and everything and so Mm -hmm. um it's all over the place dude the the Mm -hmm. studio ghibli stuff is from every individual character to the way we design the look of the place to the artwork the is. artwork is you know we tried to very much make that ghibli-esque in terms of again just that variety dude we wanted it to look so different and unique from everything else as well as within itself all the different things each like each restaurant so there, there's three restaurants and bars that are very mm-hmm. different on the wandering tavern and each of them has completely different types of ownership, very completely different types of themes, how they look, how they feel, what characters and NPCs you'll find in there, what plot hooks relate to them. And it's just really trying to bring out that unique feeling that then mm-hmm. has that like grungy undertone where everything's like all like, woo, pretty colors up on the top. Yeah. Underneath it's like, that's really well said. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, there's something actually deeper going on here. Yeah. So that, that would be it. It's, it's, it's a culmination of loads of different inspirations from his movies, you know, taking spirit ideas from, um, you know, Princess Mononoke, you know, using some of the fun and whimsy of Totoro, you know, bringing in that spirit away bathhouse, you know, there's chunks from all of it that we were just kind of pulling on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so to, to, to define it as any one major Studio Ghibli theme would be very hard. I think is the way I put it. We tried to draw on a a chunk, a chunk of everything basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's kind of, it's kind of funny that the subject of airships has dro- has dropped on our lap in the, in this context, given um given a certain game that what that um was sent to me about a week ago, that mm-hmm. being Airship Kingdom Adrift. Okay. Which, oh, interesting. I've never heard of it. I can I can essentially describe it as in as an airship combat sim. That's mm-hmm. the simplest um, explanation I can get. I can give for it. There's a lot of moving parts involving it, but the big thing is, it is doing what would be naval combat in other games and doing it with airships, with a few with a few okay, tweaks yeah. here and there. Um, and sounds familiar. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> so I I recognize that. God, it's like looking in the mirror. <laughs> Well, fate is is not without a sense of irony. <laughs> but truth. Speak, speaking of the bars, I I always appreciate when um in universe food is is utilized in a setting book. Um, mm-hmm. I think the the only as far as, as far as games that have done it in Five E, the only major one I can th- I can think of is that is that pro- is that Five E project by Studio Agate. The mm-hmm. people who've gone back to doing sh- um, Shadows of Esther in these days, mm-hmm. um, Fate dude, Forge was the it was a, dude, dude. We dude we we love that whole part of it. You know, my, yeah. my mom, uh, Tom's wife, um, is an excellent chef, like one of one of the best around. Where and you know, she 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 has had her skills kind of in in, in like kept to like a local sense for a very long time now 
and giving T the ability to express some of her awesome creativity with the amazing recipes that are included in the book mm -hmm. was awesome because she she worked with the writing team to talk about what type of foods would be in these places. What are some things that can relate to being in the sky to to having you know these kinds of uh, these kinds of chunks of information or, or this this type of lore and then going from there and and using stuff you know creating you know spins of things twists of that and then making them into recipes that not only then are super cool because you know your players go to this place and you can make them some food from that place if you wanted to but also it's something then that if you want to just make those recipes because you like them for your friends outside of that you don't it doesn't even have to be at the dnd table or you know for your games if you just enjoy the recipes then you know, we're, we're, we're super stoked that we're, we actually will be continuing to include that in every supplement that we make because we think it's it's freaking awesome. And uh, and we appreciate you noticing that. Yeah. And I, yeah, I agree. Appreciate you noticing. And, um, and we think we can do it as good or better than anyone else because we have a, you know, like a master chef as part of our team. Yeah. And this isn't, you know, it's not just... Uh, Simple. I mean, there are. It's a different. The spectrum of recipes is for people that like to cook a lot and are willing to get into more complex recipes. But also, there's some really simple things in there as well for mm -hmm. just, but also tasty. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's something that we, you know, like in the TTRPG space, Mildred, as you know, everyone's trying to find their own identity, their own uh, signature, and. Mm -hmm. We're you know we're trying to do that as well, and having recipes as part of our supplements is one of the things that we really think um, we do. Be proud as, of yeah we yeah we we feel like we do a really good job with that. So mm -hmm. and not not just the recipes but also the artwork to represent the recipes as well. So yeah no thanks for thanks for checking it out. You'll have to we actually had a um, a YouTube creator partner of ours that was promoting the wandering tavern that cooked up what do they cook up do you know they cooked up the the turtle the like turtle kin oh. brownie cookies yeah and um and something else i can't remember what the other thing was. yeah i didn't see that promo how, how did were they like loving they, it they really enjoyed it yeah yeah they really 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 enjoyed it That's so they, cool. they were like they're very moorish and we're kind of diving in yeah it was really really nice That's cool. it was yeah, really very nice to see, to see. but yeah appreciate you noticing that yeah definitely did yeah Sounds like you've done your, your your homework, man. Which we I also appreciate you, like you know. Yeah, I always I always um, do my homework when it comes to these kind of things. <laughs> yeah. Um. No, well, not everyone does though, dude. Not everyone does. There's yeah. Some people like some people run podcasts and they don't they don't uh, research at all. They just depend on active listening and uh, and and, uh, and, and then that just is... kind of the, uh, the the give and take, the back and forth. So exactly appreciate it, dude. Yeah, I um. I keep I keep hearing that a lot a lot of people bring it up that that I do a big I do a big deal of research when it comes to di diving into the nitty gritty of things. I'm, and I'm like, I fi I figured that was just standard practice. <laughs> no, definitely not, dude. I don't think I, I dude. It's we we've maybe had I would say that we've been on a good few podcasts, but there's like two or three you're you're included in that that really put in the time to to ask good mm -hmm. questions and 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 know a lot about what we're doing where where you know we've definitely been on others where people you know are wanting to hear it from us more than they than they wanted to come into the show with stuff do you know what i mean yeah then again i i've self-described myself over the years as a wannabe journalist in the sense that i'm apparently doing journalism by accident even though i never studied for that formally mm -hmm. <laughs> well dude you're doing a great job you're mm -hmm. doing a great job but I, I remember the last time we spoke, you were mm -hmm. just your, just your curiosity of a bunch of different areas, not just gaming, but like, um, you know, you mentioned how much you used to read when you were younger and all this stuff. All, all that can really benefit these types of conversations because you're mm -hmm. drawing on a huge knowledge base of information. You know, yeah. that uh, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Now. When I had you guys on last, it, w it was for Sky Zephyrs, and one of the part one of the parts of that was the digital tools that you're using for it. Now, mm -hmm. as I understand, with the Wandering Tavern, there are some additional some additional parts and additional bits for that. Is some of that going to 
um, tr going to trickle backwards into, say, the digital tools for Sky Zephyrs? Yeah, so that's that's a great question. Um, so the, for example, the ship builder, um, where you have parts and stations, and you can then custom build your your very own airships at the moment, and we're moving towards land vehicles next. Um, the the airship basically, um, the airships that were included in the Wandering Tavern, ha will be now included in the ship builder for anyone that has a subscription. Basically, mm -hmm. so we are going to be uh, dishing that out. Um, in, in the very near future, as well as that uh, starting, um, God, uh, to, later this week, we will be releasing uh, one airship's worth of parts and stations. Um, is it every month, I believe? Uh, well, some sort of additional yeah. um, fun stuff for subscribers to have. So it could be additional parts and stations. It could be an actual airship it could be an adventure an adventure it would just be something that you know keeps you coming back and and wanting to you know to use some of the stuff that you're using in the, in the builder if you're if you're making ships then you want to have um a, a more way. expensive category yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. catalog even and, and abilities to then use it so yeah we're, we're going to just be giving people more and more of that as we go so there'll be there'll be uh 50 plus ish uh, I, I think somewhere between it's 51. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the final number is, but 50-ish parts coming from the Wandering Tavern, plus about another 5 or 10 coming from this month's little drop that we're doing for everyone who, uh, mm. who who's part of the uh, Hat Deep Builder subscription base. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah We've got to get you hooked up on that, by the way, dude. We need to get you hooked up on that yeah. so that you can, uh, yeah, we'll, you can have a play with that. Yeah, we'll give you a, we'll give you a sign in. Mm-hmm. Which I, I certainly appreciate. Now, of course. with with that in with that in mind, um, when it comes to when it comes to the downtime games, that's another thing I'm curious about. Since downtime activities, downtime mechanics is some is an aspect of design that I think is significantly underrated. You know, the what <laughs> what is the party doing when they're not adventuring? It's easy to hand wave that that away, but I think it. I think it's, for lack of a better term, leaving money on the table. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not saying that in a cynical sense. Money in the sense of, um, role playing opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious what um, downtime games is going to entail. It's a great question. Um, and dude, I I'm aligned with you 100. percent I I feel like a lot of times for me, downtime in D and D or any TTRPG is where I have the most fun. Mm. I often find myself, you know, like, and I start thinking, do you know what it is? I feel like you develop your character almost more in downtime yeah. than you do when you're, like, out adventuring. Like, the idea of being able to, like, you know, be like, huh, what would my guy do if he's just, like, sat around? It's like, oh, well, he really likes sword play, so he'd probably be training with his sword. Like, GM, can I do some sword training? And, like, does that gain me any benefit? Mm. And, like, or if I, like, keep doing it every day as part of our downtime, like, do I get any benefit? You know, and so thinking about that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, like when when we'd go, uh, we you know at the end of the campaign, we'd be tucking in for bed or, or waking up in the morning. You'd be like, my character is outside, just doing some uh, some katas or some you know, yeah, some sword yeah. player that type of thing. But also, wouldn't you say also, um, it's a way for the group party to bond to, closer, to interact differently as well. Totally. It forces it forces different thoughts in terms of like it's us versus the world, mm. especially with our downtime games. That can be like you guys versus each other. That can be everyone kind of going like the party playing against each other, as opposed to the party playing against NPCs or the party playing against the GM or whatever. You know, it's it can be the, these are games that can be played within the party as well as yeah. um, you know with NPCs and stuff. So the games themselves, um, we've got three games. Uh, we've got something called Fool's Paradise. Um, we have 50s, uh, which is a dice game. Fool's Paradise is like a card game similar to like poker, or blackjack kind of vibes. Um, then you've got 50s, um, which is kind of like a um, an odds and even dice game, basically, mm -hmm. that is super fun. And uh, the beautiful thing about 50s is not only can you play it in-game, but you can actually play it a, like at the table with the dice. So like if you learn 50s, it doesn't just have to be played at your D and D table. Like if you go to, you know, like a pub or you know, a bar with your friends, 
and you're like wanting a cool game to play, you can teach people how to play 50s if you've got a couple D6s on you. Mm. Um, so that's and who doesn't always have, have a if you're of if D6s. you're a D and D fan, you don't you have D6s. Not you leave your house without <laughs> yeah, not... a couple D sixes on your ass, dude. It's not like I don't have dice dice by the pound or you or use them to break <laughs> the kitchen floor or anything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta you gotta carry that like Batman utility belt of dice. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final one that we have is like a archery style game called Lucky Shot. Um, and all of them are just super simple games that GM can learn very quickly, run very quickly. Players can have a bit of fun. If there's an NPC that you want the GM, like as a GM, you want to use to antagonize the players or something, you can play a game with them and, you know, have him shit talking and, you know, having fun with them while they're doing it. Um, all that kind of stuff. But as well as that, uh, Motor, we, we also went down the route of, you know, the games were a big one. Um, then we did the recipes because we thought that's, you know, another great downtime thing. If any of the players wanted to cook or learn how to cook or try the foods around the place or things like that. Um, and then another thing we looked at is because there's a lot of illegal activity actually happening on the Wandering Tavern. Um, we have an illegal substances and illegal goods part of downtime as well, which basically just breaks down what goods are illegal in the wandering tavern what goods you know they are traded and sold on the wandering tavern are illegal and then we also have some illegal substances now um it's not for everyone um but we wanted to include it in there because some people do like including that kind of stuff in their games so we have a couple of different illegal substances with some mechanics for if players decide they would like to part their they would like their characters to partake um, in the illegal substances, then then they can do. And we've got some mechanics for that as well. So you know we really wanted to make downtime feel a little bit more full, a little bit more fleshed out, have uh, have some more stuff to it this time, and uh, and and we're super happy with how a lot of it turned out. We're really really happy with um, you know the the mechanics for the games. Um, the mechanics for uh, the the illicit substances um, and and yeah the recipes are, are are awesome as well so you know downtime like like you said dude I, I think downtime is so underrated so I, I appreciate you bringing that up as well because mm -hmm. it's something that not a lot of people talk about how how awesome downtime is yeah I'm I'm run I'm running a sword world actual actual play on Saturdays and one of the more in, one of the more infamous moments was the um, was on on the ship on the ship that they were taking to a new continent. The the various jobs that they had to take in order to keep up the whole thing of being basic basically a basically a guard, which was how they got on the ship for free, mm -hmm. which involved involves one character having to do the dishes, unfortunate, and complaining the whole while because they're a tabit, which are like little um rabbit like folk. Mm -hmm. Amazing, that's awesome. And I love I, that. I love, I love having jobs on on a ship as you're going. I think that's super smart, yeah. dude. Love that. And when I when I say complaining the whole while, I I mean they were. It's almost like they were channeling Cat from Red Dwarf. Oh, okay, <laughs> nice. You know, they'll you know do doing the job, but um, making everybody making sure everybody knows that they are not happy with it. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That has some uh, flavor. I like it. Mm -hmm. And nice. I think. Now, even with the 5e Association, you've described it as system agnostic. Is by that do you, Indeed, by that do you yeah. mean that the um, a lot of the a lot of the 5e stats would be in its own section, or it's how do you how do you carry in that agnosticism? Dude, no, these questions. <clears throat> let me get my words out. These questions are banging. You're doing an awesome job. Hell yeah! You should be part of our publicists. <laughs> I need to send you a check, oh, dude, because <laughs> these are these are these are like really like differentiators yeah. in our setting that we um, we think will resonate with the community. So thank you for mm -hmm. asking. Thank you for noticing it initially, but also asking because you know yeah, yeah, this is how people hopefully will will look at our stuff and say yeah that is different than other stuff. Um, I'm so to to answer the question though, the um the system agnostic stuff is essentially this: every piece of lore. Every bit of uh, of lore and information about the setting can be plugged into, you know, and ca it can be plugged into any system just off the bat. Um, obviously, if you're doing sci-fi systems and things like that, it would need to be adjusted. Obviously, um, 
because it's you know it's it's a steampunk more kind of like steampunky uh you know fantasy kind of style uh style setting but it can be plugged into any system now within that there's mechanics throughout the whole book so for example for stat blocks for characters um for like i mentioned you know the um the 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 downtime games those um those chunks of information that are that are mechanics the magical items the new spirit mechanics that we've put in all of that um we have 5e versions and what you'll find is as you're flipping through the book you'll get to like for example the lucky shot page and you will have oh sorry tom uh, tom's phone is going off um the um you have um the mechanics for the the lucky shot game in 5e in like a 5e block and then mm. below that you'll have a system agnostic version of those mechanics um in a system agnostic block now the system agnostic stuff is written in a way that allows gms to interpret it based on their system and then do what is ever do what it ever most relates to um, or is most relevant to their system based off of what I'm saying. So, for example, it might say, you know, make a physical fortitude, uh, make or complete a physical fortitude uh, checker task, basically. So it allows GMs to, if the game uses checks, do that. Or if it's, uh, we use the word task as an umbrella term for any sort of other method of getting them to make a sort of a, rel a system relevant physical fortitude. Um, like a, a thing to overcome would be how I'd put it. Mm -hmm. So um, it's written in a way that means that GMs can really use it in whatever fashion they want and um, and gives them just like almost the foundations. If, if we're talking about like a building, it's the foundations of the building um, before they then fill in some of the spe system specifics um, around the foundations that we've given, essentially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, dude, we're, we're super excited about it. And this new system agnostic like method that we're using, we, we will be applying to all of our supplements going forward because, um, you know, it, it does allow for gems to have this much wider range of opportunity. It means, you know, if you're a Pathfinder person, you can still use our you can still use our setting. You know, if you're a um, yeah, I, I don't know if you're someone who plays Powered by the Apocalypse games, you can still use our setting. You know, if you're someone who plays you know, uh, a, a, any other of the, the fate, uh, the fate system or, you know, whatever, whatever system you might want to be using cipher, you know, you can then use our setting because we've given you this foundation of like, cool, this creature, um, has low physical abilities and that's yeah. it. And then cool. Interpret that in D and D five E that would be like, Oh, they've probably got sub 10 in, in strength and dexterity and constitution or something like that, you know? So it allows GMs to interpret mm -hmm. it to their own liking basically does that make mm -hmm. sense yeah and obviously over in my temple there's no shortage of options that i have especially yeah. over, especially given all that's happened in the last year exactly um, yeah, yeah and the thing is as well dude like as more of our supplements come out there'll be more and more of a yeah, you know, like a familiar language that you will see yeah. in our system, ag the way we present system agnostic rules. So you'll see it in the Wandering Tavern, and then when we have our next supplement, you'll see, it's, you know, the same language that you'll be able to be like, okay, so for this, I know I do this in my system. Yeah. So it'll it'll all become, um, hopefully, hopefully it's pretty easy to start with anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll become more familiar. As you much guy. more familiar that you can, you know, you'll we'll be able to do it fairly uh almost like reflexively you'll you'll know what you need to do with different things mm -hmm. now as far as the page count what would you guys be shooting for it's a great question i think we're looking at somewhere between 250 and 280 I no think. 150 no sorry sorry 150 180 i think it's gonna be closer to 200 dude because i don't did you uh mildred did you get a your eyes on uh sky's efforts ever um i ended up i ended up missing i I ended up missing out the first time beca because of some complications. Um, for this one, I ended up going with the all with the all in as kind of a catch up. Oh, oh nice one. amazing, dude! Oh, we'll... first of all, thanks for backing it. Yeah, Jesus, and we and we will hook you mm -hmm. up with. Well, let's get this, we'll get you Sky Zephyrs as well. But what I was going to say is, in Sky Zephyrs, along with the let's say two hundred and twenty pages of content, 
we had another like a, an appendix that um, we've had some really positive feedback from. Basically, it's the uh, evolution of the artwork. So from initial sketches all the way through to line work and then to coloring and everything, or maybe there's some reference sketches as well that have been put. So, so for many of the pieces of art in the Wandering Tavern, there'll be, the, there'll be an appendix in the back that covers many of the pieces of art and it'll show the art journey as well. So there's that on top of all the, you know, the, the usual stuff. So I think it's going to be more like, you I think it's going to be, yeah, I feel like it's going to be 180 to 200 or so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I fucked the page count last time. So I'm <laughs> going to say 150 to 180. <laughs> yeah. I'm playing safe. I'm playing totally safe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not but, 100% but, but, sure. I mean, but because of that, a result of that is that we do have the art journey. Yeah. Um, which we love. part of our, our supplements now yeah. going forward, which we yeah. love. It's, yeah. it's really cool. So it's almost like a, it's almost like we have a, a coffee table book in the back of the supplement where mm -hmm. if you're tired of like, you know, getting stuck into rules and stuff like that, you can just flip through those pages over a cup of tea and just, you know, admire enjoy. Some yeah. Admire some art. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can, I can certainly get that now. As far as a release window, not a hard date, what would you guys be shooting for? For the Wandering Tavern, we're looking at, um, we're looking to, uh, essentially the way things work is when Kickstarter finishes, they take a while to collect all the, the backing from the, from the backers. And then at that point, once the backing has been processed, um, we are hoping to fulfill all the digital stuff, essentially when the backing has been processed. Um, the, the PDF is still in the works, but based on how long it takes Kickstarter to do their, their backend stuff, um, we're hoping to, to be on time with that. Then after that, um, we will be delivering physical, um, physical rewards of the Kickstarter, what, six to eight weeks after that, I believe, or eight, eight weeks eight after Eight weeks that? after the digital. So yeah, the, there, the printing lead time is eight weeks. So the once the digital is done, it will be print ready, and we'll just pass that through to our printer, and eight weeks later, it will be ready, which is another thing that I think, I'm, I'm not sure how much you have been uh, backing other Kickstarters, Mildred, but there are some, you know, there's some fairly recognizable Kickstarters out there that have, you know, between one and two year lead times be before you get your hands on in, certainly before you get your hands on a book and some of them before you even get your hands on a PDF they're just going out like months and months maybe even a year oh yeah for P for the PDF so we're really priding ourselves on trying to get to people as yeah. soon as freaking possible we're like we, we want it within the first at least the first couple months we're aiming like to get it to you guys within the first couple months we we're this one is shorter than the last one and we're hoping for the next one there is no lead time. I hope the next one, once yeah. the Kickstarter ends and Kickstarter processes all backer funds, you're going to be getting your stuff. Like, like books will be shipping out and digital copies will be in your inboxes. That's, you know, that same week, so mm -hmm. to speak. But that's, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. So, um, but that's, that's our aspiration. So you can have that, you know, when you're, when you're backing something on a Kickstarter, there's a, there's an element of, um, you know, ha having that instant gratification that you, you, you it's, you're excited about it, you want it. And um, what if you're able to get it? That's what we're kind of going for. We want you to get it while that excitement is still there. Because two years later, dude, you've forgotten you've even bought it. Like it shows up on your doorstep and you're like, what the hell is this? I'm like, oh, well, that's cool for an idea I had two yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, Bodhi's, Bodhi's uh, answer in summary is that we Digital think, should be sooner, and then physical a little bit later, but yeah. within when the next think, two months. I yeah, within the next two months, yeah. So you'll have your hands on uh, on digital probably by, this is May 15th or so, what is today? May May 13th. May 13th, mm -hmm. probably by mid-June, would you say safely? Uh, yeah, safely, yeah. 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 By mid-June, yeah. mid you're going to get it, you're going to get the PDF, <laughs> and then uh, mm -hmm. just fast forward eight weeks, and then and you'll have the, um, the book in your hands as well. Oh, yeah. And I'll certainly be keeping an eye on how things develop with it. But with thank that you, said, I do want to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens here. <laughs> and you know, any, anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, 
drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Dude, can I just say um, before we, we um, sign off, um, A, again, thanks again for having us on again. Mm-hmm. But B, your style is fun. And uh, we, we've legitimately had a couple really fun laughs here. Also, you know, appreciate your knowledge and uh, appreciate you giving a, a platform for us to talk about our projects. It does mean a lot to us, dude. So yeah, for yeah. sure, man. We, and, and we look forward to chatting to you uh, uh, in, in the future. Um, and also, dude, thank you so much for being part of the Discord community as well. We love seeing you posting your content in there and um, and, and being a part of it, man. And yeah. for anyone out listening, if you want to interact with Mildred, come into our Discord and ask him ask him some questions. We, we, oh, yeah. we, we, we'd love to see it. Uh, but no, seconding what Tom said, this mm-hmm. has been awesome, man. Really appreciate you and, uh, and hopefully um, get to chat to you soon, man. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm always around. I'm always doing something. I'm gonna be do I'm gonna be doing something else um, late later tonight. Incredible, incredible. Nice. At, at around ground, s- around se- around seven cent, not seven central. Around um, nine central, I'm gonna be do- gonna be working on a um, dif- a different thing. Um, okay. But oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a, but like like I said, I'm always on I'm always on the move, always working on some di- some different um, project in one form or another. But yeah. with with that said, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there'll be plenty <laughs> more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! (laughs) Nice one, dude.